Hello and welcome back. Thank you for joining me. And as always, thank you for your dedication and your commitment to your spiritual practice, whatever that looks like. What you're taking the time out of your day or your evening to do is of great importance and perhaps larger than we even give it credit for in our day-to-day -day lives filled with email and bills that we have to pay and telephone calls and work and the kids, the dog, household chores, preparing meals, going out for meals, exercise, going to the gym, going for a walk, looking at our calendar, looking at our social media feed, and then doing something else and looking at our social media feed and all of the things that we do to occupy our time over the course of our lives. This is, in fact, of huge, huge importance that you're taking the time out of that parade to pay attention to what really matters, healing the mind, which is why you are here. We're all here on this thing called the spiritual path because we want one thing and one thing only, the peace of God. We want peace, real peace, not temporary peace, but eternal peace, the peace of God. It's what has everybody on the spiritual path. And, and whether that's something that we actually consciously state or even acknowledge, that's one thing. But it's what deep down is going on. In other words, we have all heard the call of our inner teacher, the Holy Spirit, and you've answered it. That's huge. And I'm willing to bet that you've answered it on multiple occasions. That's tremendous. So let's all pay attention to the message of our inner teacher today and keep going. Yes, let's all do that. We've been talking about the idea of giving every single situation in our lives over to the Holy Spirit for his purposes or its purposes, if you prefer, for the purpose of healing the mind, for the purpose of extending love to the Son of God for the purpose of forgiveness, of union. And we're invited in literally each and every situation that we find ourselves in to set the goal of that situation as truth. In other words, to set the goal of the relationship as truth. Every phone call, set the goal as truth. Everything that you read, that time, that situation that you find yourself in, set the goal as truth. Set the goal as truth for your entire day, for your entire lifetime, and every seemingly individual situation that pops up in the course of your day, set the goal as truth and invite the Holy Spirit to enter. Peace inevitably results when you do that. And by the way, when you make a habit of that and do it consistently, things aren't the same. That's about as close as I can get in words to that. So as I do, and I'm going to keep doing, because it really, really works, I am going to continue to invite you 
to do this. Set the goal of every situation as truth. Invite the Holy Spirit in and step aside. Do as you're called or instructed to do. And watch as peace results and all of the means fall in the line to accomplish the goal of truth. This does not mean, for example, in a business context, that somebody's going to buy something from you, or that you're going to have what on the surface looks like your original goal for the conversation. Something may appear to be quite contradictory on the screen, on the surface of life, yet when you set the goal as truth, you can bet that peace is going to result. Do this often enough, and well, as we say here in the world, it is transformative. All I can do as a teacher is point. And th actually, that's all any spiritual teacher could ever, in fact, do is point. It's up to each and every one of us to do the work. I know. But it is. And, and that, I hope that you actually find that empowering rather than a drag, although we're so habituated to seek instant gratification. We're so habituated, especially with our modern technology, to seek an instant dopamine hit that we're often put off by something that requires adult responsibility of us. Yeah, yeah we show up for work and stuff. Our spiritual practice involves this deep level of responsibility. We're the ones that change our mind, and we don't do it alone. You are not alone. And furthermore, when you invite the Holy Spirit into every single situation in your life and set the goal of that situation as truth, you have a power with you that you cannot even possibly imagine. It is not imaginable. It is not of this world at all. You have a power that, in fact, is you, part of you that goes with you. So when we give every situation over to the Holy Spirit for his purposes, we're not giving our power away. Rather, we're opening to it and accessing it. It's powerful. All we can do on a video such as this is talk about it. It needs to be, and most certainly can be, experienced, and I wish this experience for all of you right now, as soon as you're ready for it. Just, yes, we have to experience it, but it is our experience that shows us the truth of these words that demonstrates the truth of what Jesus is telling us in this course. We effectively prove the truth of this to ourselves, and it is an eye-opener. It is a game-changer. Want to move the needle, so to speak? Do this. I invite you. Here in the text, all of this comes from chapter 17, to be specific. And, and as always, 
You're welcome to read as much of this or as little of it as you like. Now, having read chapter 17 once, I would certainly invite you to read it twice. And you know where I'm going with this, having read it twice, three times, you know. It's very, very powerful. Specifically, we're in section seven, which is entitled The Call for Faith. And here in this section, Jesus offers us some very, very helpful teaching about true forgiveness, the practical centerpiece of A Course in Miracles, and where we find a wealth of opportunities on a silver platter for us to awaken. We really do. And here in paragraph eight, to be specific, he talks about how we tend to view forgiveness here in the world. We look out and we assume, and it is an assumption, and it happens to be an incorrect assumption, in other words, an error, a simple mistake. We think that our brother, somebody, has done something to us or that we have harmed them. We've done something to them, or they've done something to us, or both, often, right? Both situations appear to happen in the world. And we make that real. We make that supposed transgression real to ourselves. And we tell ourselves that we're holding something against our brother that he did to us. That's not actually the case. Rather, we're bitter and resentful or vindictive or spiteful or whatever form this reaction may take. We are all of that because of what we did to him. We're holding against our brother what we did to him. We're holding the past against him and we're projecting it on to him. We're projecting, in other words, our own fear, our own guilt on to someone else. That's the blame game. That's what we all habitually do. So quite naturally, a course in mind training, which is what a course in miracles is, quite clearly, and when Jesus tells us that, this is a course in mind training. Oh yeah, yeah it is. So, with this being a course in mind training, the more you stick around for it, the clearer it becomes that all of the action is in fact in the mind. We think our brother has done something to us, and on the surface of life, it appears that way. Really, he hasn't done anything to us. How can I say this? It sounds contradictory here in the world. It is certainly not. Because this perceived separation from our brother, this perceived separation from God, never took place. We're invited, as we study and practice A Course in Miracles, to accept what the Course refers to as atonement for ourselves. Now, this does not mean atonement as in, I'm going to get somebody back, I'm going to atone for this wrong that somebody did to me. Hatred, warfare, the blame game, all of the drama that we see on the broadcast news and on social media and stuff every day. Not that. Not that kind of atonement. Not surprisingly, words mean different things here in A Course in Miracles. That is deliberate for us to think about it and to put them into practice. When Jesus invites us to accept atonement for ourselves, central to this is our acknowledgement, our acknowledgement, in other words, our acceptance that the separation never took place. Atonement, another way of looking at this, is accepting the Holy Spirit's correction. Should we let it, we can accept the Holy Spirit's correction of our perception, 
we don't see things as they are. This course is about our learning to see them as they are. Once we've fully, totally, and completely done that, truth dawns of itself. That's awakening. That's what people call enlightenment. And it can seem so esoteric and fanciful in the midst of our daily lives, and so far off, yet it's accessible right now. Because right now is the only time you have. You could make what we deem to be in the world, significant progress, giant exponential growth, quantum leaps and massive transformation is available right now. That's all the time we have. Past is not here. It's gone, isn't it? Future is not here either right now. It, this choice for the Holy Spirit instead of the ego is available right now. The choice for love instead of fear is available right now. Let me clarify what's meant by that. I don't mean our special relationship, our exclusive little club relationship, love from here in the world. It's not the love that people sing about in rock and country lyrics, not at all. This love is God total, abstract, and all-inclusive, all-encompassing, all-reality. That, that choice is available to each and every one of us right now. So let's wrap up today with going back to this recent theme of letting the Holy Spirit run the show. Let it in. If you don't believe me that this works, the only way that you'll ever find out if it works is not by reading about it in a book. You know where I'm going with that. It's to do it. Do it. When you do, peace results and it brings forth faith as you do it. Which, by the way, people notice. The goal of this course is not to effect change in what appears to be this material world. So it's not necessarily to make more money, though you may well. I mean, really, you may well. It's not to deepen your existing romantic relationship or to acquire a romantic partner necessarily, though if you dedicate your relationship to the purposes of the Holy Spirit and give it over to him, your relationship will most certainly deepen. Ask Cindy. Just saying. Cindy's my wife, by the way. You may, in fact, attract somebody. I don't know, but that's not the point. The point is not to effect change in the world outside. It's to change your mind. Mind is the cause. What we appear to see as the outside world is the effect, the result. It may be helpful to see your mind as a giant movie projector playing a film. It, the projector does its job and projects, places on the screen of life, whatever film you put in it. Are you watching a war and horror movie? Are you watching a heartbreak movie? You're invited to go up to the projector house, which you find is 100% accessible in the end, oh, and unlocked with a different film in there. You could switch it out. You could do that. Along the way, you may have many, many questions. 
this is so integral to spirituality because it is deep self-inquiry after all that if you don't have questions pouring out in your mind you're probably not doing this yeah i mean even a first reading of this material produces dozens and dozens of questions doesn't it so to the extent that you have questions, you are most certainly welcome to bring them here. A number of people in the past here have taken advantage of just that. And I look at the comments all of the time here on YouTube. So if you ask a question, I will see it and I will either address it right there in the comment thread, or if it is too much to type out, I will record a separate video or even a series of videos about it. So it can be a real excellent way to go deep on something that's coming up live for you, which as a guide for you, I'm very, very interested in. And so any way that I can serve or help in that regard, you're most welcome to pose the questions and I will see them and I will answer them. Now, if you also want to pop in and say hello, I'd love to hear from you. So what we've got going on here is a beautiful thing. And we're using this 21st century technology, which quite obviously can be used to spread disinformation and hatred and lies and all of that. We're using it to spread the love of the Holy Spirit. So thank you for joining me in that. It's an international community. People are here from all over the world, literally. And that's very, very cool. So that's part of the benefit of being able to meet and congregate here virtually is that we can communicate the love of the Holy Spirit to each other in this forum. So if you have not yet joined us, we would love to have you. Please go ahead and subscribe. Thank you to those of you who have recently subscribed because there have been quite a few of you. So if you're watching, welcome. If you haven't yet subscribed, this is the prompt in the corner of your screen. So just click that arrow over there. You'll be invited to join us. Do that. Several videos appear each week, and I'm more than willing to answer questions for you. So if you've got them, please feel welcome to leave them. This course is powerful. Let me simply say that and, and, and leave it at that. All right. So thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon.